Hello, chill computer guy here. We're in Bitwig Studio. I haven't been able to make many videos. I've been super busy. Bitwig Studio. I haven't really talked about Bitwig Studio since uh, 2.3. I think I talked about it a little bit. My thoughts on it, but I never really had a chance, too much of a chance to really get in here and mess around with uh, 2.3, but there's a lot of things here that I'm really digging about 2.3 here. Now, one of them is this, uh, this instrument selector. The DSP in Bitwig Studio can be an issue. It does not handle DSP, in my opinion, as well as like Ableton or maybe even Propellerhead Reason. But the difference is, is you, they give you options to allocate your DSP to what you're going to use it for. In other words, every single instrument has an orange little icon. You can click it and turn it off. It grays it out and it's not using any DSP whatsoever. That is great. I really dig that. I dig that because the caveat or the thing that's bad about that is if you do do that, it's going to take a little time to load your plugins back in. But, uh, you know, I, I tend to put a lot of plugins on sometimes, you know. Now, a good example of this, like my, ma my, master, my master bus here, these are plugins that I love that I just are on the master bus. But I'm, I mean, I use them all, but I, th there are things that I want on there, and then I'll turn them off and on. You know, different genres, different plugins type of thing. But um, you can see that I can just turn these off, you know, and then they're just not using any ideas. They're idling. They're sitting there idle. It's like it's like they're in the mix rack, and they're fucking unplugged, you know? There's nothing going through them. It's like, um, but we're going to talk about the instrument layer here is what, the, what we're going to talk about. Now... You can see here I have piano, lead, pads, drums, bass, and arp. Now this is just a real basic template that I'm building now. I've only been working on this for a little bit. But uh, what I did is each of these has an instrument layer within it, and then I put several presets of some of my favorite uh, instrument VSTs, especially the drum. Like even the drums, we have multiple drum kits in there, you know. So it's, it's pretty handy. Let's say you listen to your drum there. something that you'll find about using instrument layers is when you go in to work on like let's say a drum track it's not going to give you your actual drum names because this is defining the instrument layer and not the actual drum uh, cube within there and so a good way to fix this is to right click on any of these and go to note lanes and what you want to do is you want to start with c1 and you just want to click these turn them all orange you know and if you have 16 pads eight pads whatever you want to do um, that's 12 13, 14, 15, 16. So you see that's 16 notes. Now if you just click away, you'll have all your drum sounds. They won't be labeled, but they'll be there. So that's how to do that. Um,
Hey, Bitwig, um, I want to be able to right-click and select my note grid right here. you got to fix that for me, Bitwig. That's a biggie. I want to be able to right-click, select my note grid. To have to go down here, click on that, and then go over to here to scroll down is just its a nuisance. I would like, uh, yeah, I should be able to right-click and... Um, Basically, kind of what I'm getting at with Bitwig Studio is um, this this type of setting is just an absolute, uh, it's just like a spread of ideas. You can fill all these blocks in. You have your instrument layers. Um, it's just you have a lot of, uh, of, uh, of potential in one, on one screen, you know, as far as ideas, putting songs together. Um, you know, the one thing about these, these mini clips is you're going to have to label them based on what is selected here, or else you'll never get back to your original sound. But what I actually recommend doing is recording these to audio once you find, like, that's what's going to work. And then later on when you add effects, you know, it'll do it through the center and return, you do it through the inserts of, of the bounce down audio. Um, and then that way, if you switch your instruments up, you know, you'll be able to know kind of where you're at. For example, our pads right here, we have several different instruments. We have uh, the Anna 2, which in my opinion, this is the one of the best VSTs as far as the quality of sound versus the DSP used. This is extremely efficient. It has a real gutsy analog sound so I actually really really love this plugin um, but I believe all of these yeah these are all Anna 2's see every single one of these is Anna 2 it's just it's four different Anna 2 presets basically you know beautiful starting points for chord progressions, you know. Totally 80s. And how this is, this is just the uh, Cthulhu. Now Cthulhu's got a very specific chord set right here. It's the chord set from the OVO. Um, yeah, this is, this is the way to go as far as chords. Um, I know I'm all like pro writing your own chords or whatever, but as far as just having something where you can plug in that many different sounds and moods into one MIDI lane, now you put your MIDI lane, your, you know, your MIDI notes in there and you're off to the races. Now, another thing you can do is color code some of these, um, which I was kind of doing, but, uh, So that's my lead selector. Then I got my bass selector here. We got. So we got a bunch of different styles of bass here, and um, we can switch between them very, very quick. <clears throat> the idea is we've got a very limited amount of time, so when we jump into our digital audio workstation, we want to be able to lay stuff down real quick. 
And basically, these are going to be labeled based on what preset is, is in here. For example, if this is the Angry Hoover, you know, let's say uh, this is Angry Hoover right here. You're just going to alt-click. you got to alt-click on there. That's the fastest way to do it. Call it Angry Hoover. Okay, just like that. So there's your Angry Hoover, and you can tell Angry Hoover right there. Oh, that's a purple type of thing right there. I think that's the right color. Anyway, that's where we're at. Um, got a lot of different uh, sounds on one screen, which is kind of nice, you know. Anyway, so yeah, definitely, definitely great to check out the uh, the instrument selector. And then put some of your favorite presets, your favorite VSTs in here. The great thing about this instrument selector is whatever's running through here, everything else has been disabled. So it's not going to fuck up your DSP and stuff. But uh, something with this setup is you do want to, you'll lose ideas really easy. I.e. you'll uh, you'll switch the instrument. Next thing you know, the MIDI notes don't have the impact they once did. So you got to be kind of careful on this. What I might actually do is just make these scenes, make scene one, scene two, scene three, based on the instruments maybe. But it's nice to be able to switch them around and kind of get it just right. So anyway, that's what we got. It's a kind of a kind of all over the place, but yeah, the big point is here is check out the instrument layers, layer your sounds in, or I should say layer. I shouldn't say layer because it's not really a layer. Um, but the good thing about these uh, these instrument selectors is um, you can put instrument layering within them. In other words, you can have instrument layers within instrument selectors. And, you know, the sky's the limit, but having everything you're going to possibly need at your fingertips when you hear a sound in your head to be able to just sit down and get down an idea super fast, this is a really good setup for that because I don't like a plain slate, but yet a plain slate sometimes is a good thing. And if you have a template with too much shit in it, you'll, your head will get crowded. You won't be able to get anywhere with it. But I'm the type of person where if I do get a chance to work on music, it's usually only like a half hour at a time. And so I want to try to get in, lay down some stuff, and then, you know, get it to the next phase as soon as possible. Because ideas come and go really, really fast, you know. You don't want to be stuck. You want to be able to have it set up so you can get in there and uh, get your get your idea down as soon as possible. And this grid layout to me is super powerful. This is with no sins and returns. Once I add the sins and returns to this template, it's going to be a monster. And so I'm pretty excited about it. It just says a lot for, for Bitwig Studio's workflow. And this is another great thing is the instrument selector that makes things real easy to have all your instruments at your fingertips. And then your MIDI grids are just, just lay down MIDI notes right here. This template is only going to be used for hatching ideas. This isn't going to be the template that opens, but this will be the template I can go to right away if I want to just work on quick ideas, quick sketch. It's like a sketch pad, if you will, you know. Anyway, Chill Computer Guy, if you haven't already, please subscribe below. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let me know. Thanks for tuning in this evening, and we'll see you guys again. Bye-bye now.